Well, hi everyone. It's Dr. Chan here with another episode of Urology Made Simple. Thanks so much for those of you who watched my last show on recurrent urinary tract infections in women. If you haven't seen it, you can click here. Some viewers who watched that show had some great questions for me afterwards and wanted to hear a little bit more about what happens when you have all the symptoms of a urinary tract infection, like burning, urgency, frequency, and pain, but then all the urine cultures and urinalysis come back and they're all negative. I'm gonna talk about when you have UTI symptoms, but all the urine tests are negative. What else could it be? There's a bunch of things that it could be, but I'm gonna focus on three things that it could be when you have UTI symptoms, but your urine culture and your analysis come back negative. Number one, it could be a sexually transmitted infection. Things like gonorrhea, chlamydia, bacterial vaginosis, and trichomoniasis all cause the same type of symptoms as a urinary tract infection does. So it's really important to get these things tested as well if your urine culture comes back negative. Your partner will thank you for it. Number two, it could be interstitial cystitis. What is interstitial cystitis? This is a very vague clinical entity defined by pain and pressure in the bladder with no identifiable cause. Urine cultures are often negative. The exact cause of interstitial cystitis isn't known, but some people postulate that it could be due to a weakness in the lining of the bladder. A leak in this lining called the epithelium allows toxic substances in the urine to penetrate through into the bladder and irritate it. Interstitial cystitis, it's chronic, it's painful, and unfortunately, it's not easily treated. One of the things that I tell all my patients with interstitial cystitis is to avoid certain foods and drinks that might cause pain. These things might include caffeine, alcohol, spicy foods, and citrus. My rule of thumb is that if you think that if you put this in your eye and it would hurt, then it's good to avoid it because it may cause the same type of reaction in your bladder. Number three, it could actually be a chronic UTI that just doesn't show up on the standard urine culture test. If it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. This applies to this situation as well. It could just be a chronic UTI that the urine culture test isn't picking up. Over the past few years, this, there's this new type of test called a molecular DNA test for urine that is a lot more sensitive at picking up bacteria than the old school method. The old way that they used to do it was they would plate bacteria on an agar plate and let it grow out for about 48 hours. The problem with it is that sometimes it doesn't pick up slow growing bacteria or if bacteria doesn't grow in enough numbers that it can easily be identified, but they're there. So that's why these new type of tests, molecular DNA, urine tests are promising. They're much more sensitive. They don't rely growing anything out on agar plates. This diagram here shows free floating bacteria in the urine that you normally see with acute urinary tract infections. These are what are usually picked up by the standard cultures using the agar plates. Now on the bottom, this idea of the bacterial biofilm that's in the walls of the bladder, these are associated more with chronic urinary tract infections. They tend not to be picked up as well with the standard urine cultures, but the next generation DNA sequencing is good at that. 
what I wanted to kind of look at next was uh, the study that did a head-to-head -head comparison between the standard urine culture and the next generation sequencing for urinary tract infections. In short, they took 44 patients with symptoms of urinary tract infections and ran both the standard urine culture and then a DNA next generation sequencing uh, for urinary tract infections. What they found was on the left side, 13 out of the 44 patients had a positive urine culture, whereas when they ran the next generation DNA sequencing for urinary tract infections, 44 out of 44 of the patients grew out bacteria. So this illustrates that the DNA testing is a lot more sensitive than the standard urine cultures in terms of picking up bacteria. So in summary, if you have urinary tract infections, but all the urine cultures and your analysis have come back negative, it could be three things. It could be a sexually transmitted infection, it could be an interstitial cystitis, or it could be a chronic UTI. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Urology Made Simple. As always, please subscribe to the channel below and we'll keep you updated on any future topics. If you have any topics that you'd like to hear a little bit more about, please write down below in the comments section and I'll make a video.